And that's why it's so dangerous. That's why people, so many of us, are just barely getting by. You know why we're barely getting by? Because the word of God is not meant to be observed. It's meant to be obeyed. And we're simply coming every service and every weekend observing the word of God instead of obeying. Somebody better say amen right there. I know they're saying a glory hallelujah you go to heaven kind of sermon, but listen, you'll go to heaven, you'll be more blessed if you do what he's telling you to do. And if for- Welcome to Evangelistic Outreach Ministries. The fields are white, all ready to harvest. Oh. For over half a century, the Evangelistic Outreach Team has traveled across the street, about the nation, and around the world with the gospel message. We're dedicated to the vision of our late founder, Dr. Calvin Evans, to reach the unreached for Jesus Christ. May the love of Christ touch you, and may His Word teach you today on Evangelistic Outreach. What a wonderful day to worship the Lord, and we have come together seeking His presence and power on this broadcast to speak to each one of our hearts today. And I pray that what we have in store will be a real blessing to you. Let's start things off with prayer today. Father, I thank you for the great, great privilege we have to come boldly to the throne of grace, where there, Lord, we can present all of our needs to you and have full confidence that you're not only able to hear us, but you're able to help us. Lord, you carry every burden, you lift every load, you bless our lives, you save our soul, forgive our sins, and heal our diseases. So I pray today that you'll bless every need that's represented in the vast audience, the friends that you've given to us to come together, to lift your name up, to worship you. I thank you for each one of them. And Lord, I pray for the anointing power of the Holy Spirit on everything that is done today. Lord, how we need you. We declare we can do nothing without you, but I'm so glad that we also know, Lord, through you all things are possible. So make this broadcast a time of blessing, a time of reflection, refreshing. And when we come to the close, may we know that we've been obedient to you and your leadership in all things. Thank you again for this privilege to share your word. And Father, thank you for your blessings on us. Bless the broadcast now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's start things off with this song. There is a river of gladness. It pours from Emmanuel's veins. A sinner was plunged beneath the flood, and God saved. Since then I walk in forgiveness. All of my guilt was erased. The chains of the past are broken at last. I got saved. Oh, I got saved. of Jesus I'm undone by the goodness of the Lord I'm restored and made right He got a hold of my life I've got Jesus How could I want more? I've received nothing but goodness I've tested and tasted your grace I was so lost till I fell at the cross and got saved. Oh, I got saved. I'm undone by the mercy of Jesus. I'm undone by the goodness of the Lord. I'm restored and made right. He got a hold of my life. I've got Jesus. How could I want more? Yeah. 
the mercy of Jesus. I'm undone by the goodness of the Lord. I'm restored and made right. He got a hold of my life. I've got Jesus. How could I want more? I'm undone by the mercy of Jesus. I'm undone by the goodness of the Lord. Aren't you thankful you're saved tonight? Well, I sure thank you for supporting this ministry, standing together with us. I don't know what we would do without our friends. You're so precious to us. And I am glad that God brings the right people along at the perfect time. He touches their heart and they sense the need to help us. I realize everyone tuned in the program today, you're not able to always send gifts, but I want you to know how important your support is to this ministry. We really need your help right now. I pray that you'll do the best that you possibly can to help us in these days. These are trying days for ministries of faith, and especially with some of the great events we have coming up. We have some special camp meetings and special services coming up that we have to underwrite the expenses for that meeting. It would be offensive to have to plead for money over and over again in these services, and I know you enjoy them when we're able to broadcast them, but all of that is expensive, and we need your help to do that. So I pray that you'll send in some special gifts to help with some of the special camp meetings coming up. We have a great, great meeting planned uh, just a little over a week away in northern Ohio. Then we'll be going down to Tennessee for the big camp meeting there. Then in May, the spring jubilee, we have to underwrite the expenses for those services. I hope you'll send in a special gift. Just mark your gift for camp meetings or for the spring jubilee. God will bless you for doing what you can. And let me remind you too that we have a great free gift offer available to you. It has two sermons on it, some songs as well on either audio CD or on DVD, absolutely free of charge. It's from the Winterfest. We had a great time there this year. God anointed the, the meeting and I have a message on there. Brian has a message on there and I believe God will use it to touch your heart and I hope that you'll contact us today to get your free gift offer. There's no cost, no obligation and you are on our mailing list I hope. If not, we just recently sent out this month's mailing and inside of it was a message, updates and some of our mission projects, what God is doing around the world and also some of the great services we have coming up. It's absolutely free of charge to be on our mailing list. Just contact us when you, uh, when you can and we'll be glad to include you free of charge and again, thank you for praying for us. Thank you for supporting us. We have some great meetings coming up this week on Monday and Tuesday night. I'll be at Allen's Fort Community Church there in the North Charleston, West Virginia area where Jerry Bonnet is the pastor, seven o'clock each night. What a great group of people, a beautiful sanctuary there. Come and be with us there on Monday and Tuesday night. I'll be preaching at the Allen's Fort Community Church. Then Brian will be in revival meeting starting on Wednesday night through Saturday night at the Sand Hill Christian Baptist Church at Wheelersburg, Ohio, where Jared Timberlake is the pastor, and I invite you to join them in a great week of meet weekend meeting there. Kyle and Brittany Schaefer will be singing. They'll have a great, great time. They're wonderful people. I know you'll enjoy your time of worship together with them. And then to think, we're just a little over a week away from the Come Alive Spring Camp Meeting at Shelby, Ohio, one of the biggest meetings that we have in Northern Ohio, and we're looking forward to being back there with the great folks there in the Northern Ohio area, Man 
Mansfield, Ohio area. We appreciate Pastor Doug Tackett and all the work that he does on that meeting. It starts a week from Monday, and we'll be giving you more information on next week. Great singers coming in like the Primitive Quartet. We'll have Mike Blanton and Evidence. So many others that will be joining us in the meeting. We'll give you all of those details coming up on next week's program, but pray for us. Now, if you'd like the free gift offer or you need more information, contact our office at 800-767-8713, or you can write us 299 Ohio Avenue, New Boston, Ohio, 45662. Or also remember to visit us on the World Wide Web, Calvin Evans. Dot .org and we always keep our meetings the current month's meetings uh, there so that you can be updated on that and come and join us in worship when we're in your area it means so much to us so much to the churches and we appreciate you well let's join the message for today Matthew chapter 7 beginning in verse 24 Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew. And beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these things, the people were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Thank you. You can be seated. There's a danger in preaching familiar passages of Scripture. And the danger is that as soon as I read this text, There'll be some of us that will say, well, I've heard everything there is to hear about that uh, passage of Scripture. I mean, it's pretty simply laid out in it. We, uh, these, uh, this Matthew chapter 7 is actually a trilogy of, of chapters that's actually one long happening. It's actually called the Sermon on the Mount. And this is the very end of that sermon that Jesus preached. Let, let me just give you some good advice. If you're having trouble on how to live with yourself, how to live with others, and how to live for Christ, Read Matthews 5, 6, and 7. And I guarantee you'll find something in that sermon that'll help you out. Jesus was the greatest preacher anyway. And so we need to learn from him. It's not a very lengthy sermon. In fact, we probably preachers, we need to learn more from Jesus in that aspect, don't we? Uh, We always hear the greatest addition to any message is shortening. Amen. Amen. Somebody (laughs) say, I heard one preacher say amen. But anyway, so uh, this is a familiar text and the danger with preaching familiar texts is everybody already knows everything about the wise man built his house upon the rock, the foolish man built his house upon the sand. But we can read that so many times that we miss the true meaning of what Jesus was trying to tell us. Well, of course, it's obvious here what, what is happening. Jesus is telling a parable and he tells us a story of two men. Uh, we don't know what they build their house out of, but we do know what they built their house on. And so we have here a a wise man. We have here a foolish man. And both face a storm. In fact, I believe that this was the same, the very same storm that each one of them faced. And so some things are obvious. A wise man, a foolish man. One man built his house upon the sand. One man built his house upon the rock. And so many times we read that and that's all we get from it. But if you, don't under, if you don't miss it, if you don't read it closely, you'll miss, I believe, what I call the X factor in this message. Uh, Levi uh, does a great job on the piano, but he's going to school to be a math teacher. And he'll tell you an X factor is a variable in a situation that has an effect on the outcome. And in this passage of scripture, there is an X factor. And here's the X factor. See, it doesn't matter if you build your house on the sand. It doesn't matter if you build your house upon the rock. Here's the reason why. Because verse 24 tells us, therefore, whoso heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them. Verse 26, and everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not. See, it doesn't matter if you build your house on the rock or you build your house upon the sand. Jesus was not trying to give us that emphasis. What he was telling us was, it all has to do with what you do with what I tell you to do. 
If you hear what I'm telling you to do and do what I tell you to do, then you'll be like a wise man that builds his house upon the rock. But if you hear what I have to say and you aren't obedient, you're like a foolish man that builds his house upon the sand. And so tonight, it really doesn't matter to me where your house is built on. I'm more concerned if you're listening and doing to what Jesus is telling you. Because if you're obedient to what Jesus is saying, my friend, your house is on the rock. Hallelujah. If you're not doing what he says, your house is on the sand. And when the storms come, it will crumble. And so I'm thankful today that if we just do what he says, we'll see great things happen in our lives. That's what he was trying to tell us. What sayings was he talking about? He was talking about everything he had said up until that point in Matthew 5 and 6 and 7. He said it's not a matter of just obeying part of it. You've got to obey everything I say. And if you do those things, you're like a wise man that builds his house upon the rock. So three things I want you to notice. Number one, I want you to notice the sayings of Jesus. See, see church, and, and hear me out here, church can be a dangerous place, so to speak, because in church we get used to hearing sermons. We get used to it. If you, if you were raised like me, uh, this is all I've ever known my entire life for 44 years. I was raised in church my entire life. And I don't apologize for it, I thank God for it. But I have heard thousands and thousands of messages. And those of you that have been going for Jesus a lot longer, you can say a hearty amen to that. Tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of sermons you have heard in your lifetime. And sometimes, let's be honest, we can get used to hearing messages that we truly don't hear what the sermon is saying to us. We can get used to hearing them. And see, both of these men heard the exact same thing. The very same message they heard. And the message was, get your house in order and there's a storm coming. See, hearing is not the problem. It's your obedience to what God is telling you. That's where we have the problem. These men both sit in a church house. These men both sit in a pew. No doubt both of these men came to the house of God probably on a regular basis. They heard the exact same message. The problem was one of them didn't heed what the man of God was telling him from the word of God. And they began to build their house upon the sand. Both heard the same things. Hearing is not the problem, but it's our obedience. See, when you hear what God has to say to you, you can do, really, there's only two things you can do. Number one, you can be informed, then you can conform, then you can be transformed. If you're a wise man building your house upon the rock, when you're informed, then you're conformed, then you'll be transformed. But if you choose to not listen to what Jesus is saying, you're getting the same information. You're being informed, but instead of being informed, you begin to contemplate or ignore what God is trying to tell you. And then when you ignore what God is trying to tell you, you you do not become transformed, you become vulnerable. You say, well, Brian, what are you trying to say? I'm saying that after you hear a message on a Sunday, and you get in your car, and maybe your spouse tells you, boy, that was a good message today. Oh yeah, that was a good message, but it wasn't for me. You know what you just did there? You were informed, but you ignored, and now you're vulnerable. But if you take what God is trying to tell you to do, and you get that information, and you conform to what the word of God is telling you, then you can leave that place transformed by the renewing of your mind. Thank God, and that's where we're sitting in our church week after week, week after week, service after service. People are getting information overload, but they're not doing anything with what God is telling them to do. And so instead of being conformed and transformed, we're being informed, but we're, we're ignoring and we're contemplating what Jesus is saying, and instead of being transformed, we're not being transformed at all. We're becoming vulnerable to what Satan has, is throwing at us. 
You say, well, what are you talking about contemplating? I'm talking about when God begins to tell you something. See, when, when sometimes God's commandments, sometimes God's uh, things that he tells us to do are hard things to do. Oh, it's easy to, uh, sometimes it's easy if we say, oh, to give and it shall be given. Whoa, glory to God. But the same Jesus said, love your enemies. Pray for them that despitefully use you. <laughs> see, see, we, well, 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 you know, well, surely he don't mean that enemy. Now, now Lord, you don't know what he did to me. I mean, uh, I ain't got the problem, he's got the problem. He's the one that needs to come to me. See what we do? We're informed. But instead of conforming to what Jesus said, to love our enemies, pray for them that despitefully use you, forgive as God has forgiven us. Well, Lord, sure, surely you don't mean that, Lord. Yes, he does mean that. It's either all or nothing. And instead of being transformed, we become vulnerable. See, the battle of life is not won in church. It's won when we obey what he says to do. It's easy living for God in the four walls of the church. It's easy living for God in Sunday school. It's easy living for God during revival time. But when you go out those doors and when you meet those in the world, what are you gonna do with what God has told you? Amen. And this applies to, there's, there's nobody in here that cannot not listen to this message tonight. You say, what? Yeah, this message is for everybody. It is? Yeah, Jesus said it was. Therefore, whosoever, that includes you, and verse 26, and everyone. So for those of you that don't think you're whosoever, then you're an everyone. Everybody in here tonight cannot not listen to this message. You have to understand, and you have to understand that this applies to everybody, and that's why it's so dangerous. That's why people, so many of us, are just barely getting by. You know why we're barely getting by? Because the word of God is not meant to be observed. It's meant to be obeyed. And we're simply coming every service and every weekend observing the word of God instead of obeying. Somebody better say amen right there. Amen. I know they're saying a glory hallelujah you go to heaven kind of sermon, but listen, you'll go to heaven, <laughs> you'll be more blessed if you do what he's telling you to do. Yeah. And information is not the problem. We have, infor we have an information overload. Last year in our home church, and I, I record, I went through every service we had at our home church, and if I calculated correctly, we heard 133 messages at the Rubyville Community Church in 2019. A vast majority of them, probably 85% of them, were from our pastor, Calvin Ray Evans, and then from myself, and then we had several visited in from the year. They, our people, hear the word of God, and none of you, you're not exempt. Most of you, every weekend, will hear two messages on a Sunday. If you have a midweek service, you'll hear a message there. Sometimes you hear good singing. You'll get a Sunday school class. You'll go to revival meetings. Information is not the problem. Our problem is we don't do what God says. Things of earth no longer matter. On that morning When the skies are split And saints are called away But most of all I want to be among that number the bride of Christ set apart in white array and most of all I want to look upon the master and sing praises when at last the battle Here, G. 
Jesus say I've kept the faith And most of all I want to hear him say Well done Everything down here will dim And lose its value When compared to all the glory We're gonna be whole but most of all, just to look upon the Master We'll make it heaven if there were no streets of gold Most of all, I want to look upon the Master And sing praises at last the battle's won I want to know I've run the race Hear Jesus say I've kept the faith And most of all I want to hear Him say Well done I want to know I've run the race Hear Jesus say I've given the faith And most of all I want to hear Him say Well We certainly hope the message today and the singing has been a blessing to you. Let me remind you, this much free gift offer is available on a DVD or audio CD. It's from Winterfest, so contact us this week, and we'll be sure to get it right out to you. And then the revival service is going on this week. Calvin Ray at Allen's Fork on Monday and Tuesday in North Charleston, West Virginia. And then I'll be at the Sand Hill Christian Baptist Church this Wednesday through Saturday with Kyle and Brittany Schaefer and Pastor Jared Timberlake and Pastor Emeritus uh, Ronnie Blevins. It's gonna be a tremendous week. So worship with us if you're able to come. And if not, pray for us that God will strengthen us and send souls for our labor. We love you. Thank you. Make sure you tune in next week. We'll have some great highlights from the Come Alive Spring Camp Meeting as well as a special message. May God bless you. Thank you for joining us today on Evangelistic Outreach Ministries. The fields are white, all ready to harvest. For more information about this ministry, contact us at Evangelistic Outreach Ministries, 299 Ohio Avenue, New Boston, Ohio, 45662, or toll free at 800-767-8713. You can also visit us online at calvinevans.org.